Hi, I'm Seamless, and today I'm going to show you how to make this work. Wee. Nah, nah, nah. Yeah, object tracking. You might have seen me do a kind of tracking before already, where I did X, Y, Z sort of like like theorem. Some <laughs> everyone has mentioned the theorem and thing, and that's basically correct. That's like this is again doing that. But uh, the, the principal change in the thought here is that we are just targeting X, Y, and Z of the camera and inverting it based on the controls noted on the math gain from a mask created by a green piece of tape. And what that is doing is it's keeping the tape in the center of the screen and at, as best as it can, the same size. This is very cool because this is the first layer of what you need to do to make facial tracking happen. This was what this was for. I put it on my head and tracked it. Now, this isn't doing it because of a lot of reasons, and I'm going to fix that in next iterations, but the point is, is that the next step, you can see that there's this here, is to line up uh, an eye an eye tracker, right? Like, check that out, right? So, the reason why this isn't working out is because I didn't totally do the thing right, but the what's going, like, the thing that's, like, the new information for me personally about how this works and why this is going to work is once you make the track happen, you take the same information from the track, and then you track the track. You just offset stuff, and then you track inside the masks that you get from the data. Because if I, if this was what the camera saw at all times, and I just stared straight at it and never moved, it can just determine where my face is, where the eyes are, based on just like knowing measurements. It has nothing to do with tracking. It has nothing to do with actually learning anything about an image. It's just saying there's going to be eyes here, and then when it sees certain like characteristics apply and be in certain locations, it does the job. And uh, the way that the primary job happens, just to be mechanically sure, first things first, we have ourselves our real camera, which is a Logitech Brio currently in some 4x3 mode, low res, 30 FPS. I don't really know what's up. It's fine. It's doing, like, it's kind of neat, actually, that this works <laughs> with such a system. But um, you make a mask out of it. I, I chose to do it by making it the color blue, high contrast, and then turning the value down until it was the only thing visible, and then resaturating it to be white. But... Be honest, I could have just put up a solid color and did chroma shifting, and then there it is, cool. But whatever, make a mask, and then do this. The reason I do this, this is a bloom. The, you put the bloom on, and it makes it look real big on the screen, and that's to make these values show up. Now, this is not normally a lot of value, like because this is cro this because it's about the value that's across the entire screen, and if all that's on the screen is this tiny little sliver of there, that's not a lot. That's not a lot to give the tracker to work. So the bloom is there to just give more data to the lumens information so that when I attach it to something, it'll do the job. And by the something, I mean what I'm doing is I'm attaching it to these formula controllers that are doing a plus minus job on 0.5 to create a sort of slider fader system that's based on where on the screen is the thing. And that math is accomplished by putting out this value of information, but for each of these individual buffers. And then the buffers themselves are these things. These are the gradients that are getting this guy as a buffer and then subtracting it so that it gets darker when it gets down a specific position because it's one of these. It's just that. It's all it is. It's a gradient. And then the other one is the opposite type. So you you get a luminous value here that's brighter than when it's on that one and it's on this side and darker when it's on this one when it's on the bottom. You add those together, you get the Y data. And same thing with the X. You just have the gradients that are on the other side and then you get the X data and Z you get from just how bright or not is this. If it gets brighter, it gets mover. And now the tracking happens when you take those, those data and you just invert it on the image. And then there it is now. And then, then as a face. So if I like the, the idea there is that I then attach it to the X, Y, Z controller, this controller, then it gets, I, I offset it because the information is not a lot. This is how much it is by default. Like that's the whole range in there, not so much, and that's why this has got just big, huge changes to it. And then the second thing I'm supposed to do is attach this to that X Y Z out from there, X Y Z in here, and then those offsets are how you go from locked position of like cool, you're tracking the object to cool plus that, then a little bit offset, and then you make that a mask, and then you start tracking crap in there. And the crappy track inside there is like, okay, there's a darker object inside a large, like a brighter white object. You, you core out where the eye is by just average eye size. And, th and then, you know, 
all of these values come off come off as like yes no information for whether or not um things like is your eyebrow here yes no is your eyebrow here yes no is it doing like a half and half kind of thing because there's like there's actually 10 layers tracking your face up there or whatever and you the more modern equivalent has lidar and infrared involved and plus all these other things that i've just described but with like a lot more direct elegance involved that make it also just easier to do faster which is important for when they're just doing this kind of nonsense but you also notice that like it only kind of works when you're staring right at the damn camera it's easy when you have the camera and you can just keep it when you can move around that's whatever but if like I, you notice how if i get kind of far out of the way even with the track i just kind of eh, it, it busts up and i actually already have ways of I, I i have ways of making that better for me personally that i will try on the next attempt at this but this is where i am now and I wanted this to be shown so that if people wanted to try something for, this, for themselves, they totally can. Anyway, if you have any questions about this, please let me know. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and perhaps super thank me, which is what happens when you use the thank button that's in the, the comment section uh, under the video. What that is, is like it's like a super chat, but it's for comments, and it gives you like a, a comment that's pinned plus you know, like what happens with super chat. It's just a super chat for comments, for not live. <laughs> that's what that's for. Um, I enjoy it because it's a form of donation for me. Thumbs up. Yeah. Can't be more transparent about that than that, right? Uh, but if you know, you know, whatevs. Uh, any questions about this? But I got to figure out my spiel. I got to do one. Like, every time I add something to the spiel, it's like it's like writing down a new year on my name and date on something and not doing it. Okay. Let's try the whole spiel. Uh, oh, uh, if you have any questions about this, please let me know. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and all that good stuff. And as usual, have a nice day. I didn't even do the thing about the super thanks, but whatever. I already did. It's mission accomplished. Communication!